you're gonna make me chase you? our day, since we're racing the sun and Vancouver has very short days this time of year, we had to move fast, which is the usual for run and gun shoots, but on top of our daylight issue, we also had that on and off again rate. But thanks to the fact that we're just using available light and shooting mostly with the Osmo, we were able to move fast enough to get everything we needed, since when using the Osmo, I can get just about any shot I can think up on the day from a higher angle to an extreme low angle, all with one system without having to re-rig anything at all. Five Karen, take one. Mark. The entrance into the fight between Katie and Cassandra, who played our lead, after a foot chase through the woods, Cassandra sort of slips and falls down a hill. We went over the hill and picked the spot that would be the easiest one to slide down, removed all the rocks from it so she had a nice clear zone, and then we put some mats at the bottom so that she could just do the fall and not worry about the bottom. So as she's sliding down the hill, I uh, got a shot with the Osmo where I was trying to match the move with her. So I climbed halfway up the hill and sort of ran down the hill next to her, uh, stumbling and tripping all over myself, but pointing the Osmo relatively in the right direction. And the shot we got worked out really well considering I was stumbling down the hill. Action. <laughs> So the stunt person we used to do the fall was stunt girl and actor Katie Stewart. The fall wasn't really high, but it's still not something you want to repeat a lot. You want to make sure you get it and move on. Now in order to do the fall, we worked Katie up to it by letting her just jump into it a few times and do the fall on her own until she was ready to shoot. Then we tied in with Cassandra throwing the kick. We only did it a few times to make sure we had what we needed and we moved on. After Cassandra's dispatch, Katie, Irma comes along and they have a fight on a rooftop. And we always made sure that they weren't fighting anywhere near the edge. So if they tripped, they wouldn't fall off the house. Also, we limited the number of people on the roof so that it could be controlled. Anyone on the roof near the edge operating a camera had a spotter below and a spotter behind so that he could focus on his shot and not fall off the building. What's really great about the Osmo is that it's small and light enough that you get zero fatigue while using it, which meant I could keep up with my actors, pushing through take after take and setup after setup without ever needing to give my arms a break. So we were able to jump around and get all the coverage of our fight shot out quickly, which coverage is just all the different angles of that moment that you're going to need later to cut your sequence together. For the most part here, I'm doing triangle coverage. A shot from one side covering this character, a reverse covering the other, and a master which covers them both. With those three together, I know that I'll be able to cut my scene. Then I just sweeten it with a few specials here and there to make the scene feel more alive. But after we shot out our fights, we moved down into the forest area to run around and get those shots. Of course here, I had my DP, who is also a stunt camera operator, do the running, 
since it was a very tight area with a lot of obstacles. But again, since the Osmo is so small and light, he was able to keep an eye on his footing and get some really dynamic shots through heavily wooded areas. And after we got all that, it was on to our aerial shots. For our opening shot, we wanted this top-down, God's eye view of our characters running through the woods before we meet them on the ground with the rest of the action. This was easy to achieve by launching the Phantom into the air, pointing the camera straight down, and we had our shot. After that, we moved on to the rooftop fight. Here, we needed two main Phantom shots. The first was a reveal of this epic background that they're fighting in front of. In order to get that shot, we would have needed to bring up a jib to get this type of shot, but because of our remote location, there's no way we're gonna be able to haul that amount of gear up there with such a small crew. Thankfully, with the Phantom, we're able to get the exact same shot with gear that fits in my backpack. For our second shot, we wanted a smooth and consistent rotation around our characters as they fought, which was easy to nail because of the point of interest mode on the Phantom. Using the point of interest mode is as simple as setting the center point, adjusting the height and distance away from that point, and then allowing the Phantom to continuously fly in a circle. Trying to do that on your own is actually quite difficult. So by removing the human error from from a continuous circle around a fixed point allows you to have a completely repeatable action to happen at that center point. Now, just because the drone is flying around by itself doesn't mean that you can go do something else. You always need to keep your eyes on the Phantom and your hands on the controller because whenever you're flying a drone of any kind, safety should always be your main concern. So the main takeaway for me from this production day was that having gear that allows you to strip down to the bare essentials is an incredible advantage. And it was a reminder that you should always make plans, but then be ready and willing to change those plans when everything goes wrong, because it almost always will. 